What is going on everyone? Griffin here coming at you with some Dima gameplay and today we are going to be talking about a very interesting concept that I came up with called weapon proficiencies for individual rogues. So let's head over and let's talk about it. So weapon proficiencies per rogue. Now this is something that kind of came about in my brain a little bit because of uh, tabletop role-playing games. Uh, essentially is where this idea came from. Now in tabletop role-playing games and a lot of tabletop role-playing games, especially like D&D &D and things like that, you have specific weapon proficiencies that your character has. And that makes them really, really good with certain weapons that allows you to add specific modifiers to it to make that weapon just a little bit better, right? So let's kind of take the concept of weapon proficiencies from a tabletop role-playing game, and let's apply some of the very same logic to the characters in Rogue Company for a second. Now, I'm going to pick on very specific rogues here. And the first rogue that I'm gonna pick on here is Demon. So Dima currently in game has access to the KA-30 by default and the Mamba by default. Now, I'm not saying that any of these weapons are bad. I'm not saying that any of these weapons are broken or need to be buffed or need to be adjusted. But I'm talking about this strictly from a weapon mastery perspective, right? Because weapon mastery, unfortunately, still exists in the game. I don't like it. I think it needs to go the way of the Dodo, but a lot of people do enjoy it. So the reason why this kind of came to mind was like, how do you kind of have the community understand that like you have access to all the weapons and you can do anything that you want to, you can play with any of the weapons that you want to, but if you bake in weapon proficiencies for the default weapons for the rogues, then that would allow those characters to be played in a way that they were much more intended to be played with, right? Because whether you agree or not, you have to acknowledge the fact whenever they introduced weapon mastery, they definitely took away a ton of the individual rogue identity by doing that. Pre-weapon mastery, rogues only had access to certain weapon sets, and because they only had access to only certain weapon sets, that was a factor that was taken into consideration when picking what rogue that you wanted to play. So if we dovetail back over to Dima for a second, Dima has access, like I said, to the K30 and to the Mamba. Now, he can have any DMR equipped or he can have any assault rifle equipped, but what if weapon proficiencies for the KA-30 and the Mamba specifically for Dima actually gave some type of benefit to using that particular weapon. Now there's a couple of different avenues to go about this and I want this to be more or less like an open conversation as opposed to condemnation in the comment section down below because my original logic behind this was like well if you give them weapon proficiencies for their default weapons then they should have better accuracy better handling you know they should be proficient with those weapons that should be the weapons that they prefer that should be the weapons that they train with so they should have better stats when using their preferred weapons opposed to like running the sahara or running the d3di with dima specifically and i'm not talking about changing damage values i'm not talking about changing ranges i'm just talking about changing the small nuance things like the reload speed of the weapon if you're more familiar with the weapon you're going to reload with it faster naturally or the accuracy of the weapon if you know how the recoil of the weapon works because you've shot it a thousand times then you should be able to predict exactly how the recoil for this weapon is going to work and you should be a little bit more accustomed to dealing with that accuracy and that reload speed as opposed to another weapon that you're not as proficient with right so that was my original thought process here i thought it would be interesting if these small little nuance things had some validity whenever it came to actually picking the rogue and the weapon that the rogue actually needs to use so then i started thinking about it in more of a broad topic right what if you know you run those weapons and if you run their preferred weapons and by running their preferred weapons then maybe you know that gives you an extra modifier as far as like xp gain from a specific match. So like, let's say that, you know, at the end of the game, you see all of the weapon mastery things pop up. And if you use the preferred weapons in that, you know, spreadsheet, then that adds a multiplier to how much XP that you're gaining, you know, from the match specifically, or possibly give some other nuanced things like you gain additional reputation points whenever you were running these preferred weapons so that it allows you to feed into that whole, you know, building up to try to get the, the chess in game and things like that. It would create a very interesting gameplay loop 
or running specific rogues and running specific weapons. Like I said, it's not an idea to break anything, but it's an idea of like, how do you make it worth it, right? Because you have to think, you have to imagine that like these rogues are trained, these characters are trained using specific weapons. That's why they have default weapons that they have access to. Now, the counter argument to this is like, yeah, but they have, you know, they're, they're highly trained. They have access to all the assault rifles. You have to assume that they they trained with all of them. Well, if that's the case, then why don't they have access to everything? Why doesn't every rogue have access to every weapon class and have access to every everything right out of the gate? All the perks, the whole nine yards. That that's that's where this argument stems from. You only have access to two weapon classes and whatever weapons exist inside those weapon classes. So let's look at it from that standpoint and from them having preferred weapons, which would be their default weapons right out of the gate. This is something that I was kind of throwing around in my head for a little while, and I was wanting to throw it out to the community to kind of see what the community thought about it. And then also to see like, if there was a weapon proficiency system added into the game, what type of benefits would you like to see? Would you like to see it help the characters out by, you know, accuracy, reload time, et cetera, et cetera? Or do you think this should be something that's more XP based? Do you think it's something that should be reputation based or do you think something entirely different what what are your thoughts what are your perspective on this be sure to let me know what you think in the comments down below i think that this would be a cool system i think that this would encourage uh players to use the default weapons that the roads have access to to take that into consideration whenever they are picking their character before they launch into a match to see exactly what they're going to do and what they would like to do within that match uh, I think that it would be a very healthy thing to just kind of encourage players to do that, but also not shy players away from exploring other weapons and other options. I think it would be the best of both worlds. I think it would be a win-win situation. And at the end of the day, I don't see why the developers don't do something like this. But be sure to let me know what you think in the comments down below, please. I'm very interested to know what your take on something like weapon proficiencies in Rogue Company would actually look like. Also, be sure to check that description for links to Facebook, Discord, and Twitter. Those are the places to contact me. If you haven't already, please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. If you've already subscribed to the channel, then consider hitting that join button to become one of the 256 crew members. Lastly, on Thursdays, starting around 11 p.m. Central Time and Sundays, starting at 10 a.m. Central Time, I will be streaming here on YouTube. So if you are interested and available, please feel free to stop by and say hello there. Thanks for watching, guys.